Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Jimmy with Two the Top Crane. Hey, we've got another crane repair video coming up. Uh, this time it's on our air system. This has an air compressor uh, made it to the side of the engine over there. Uses compressed air. I believe on this crane, the only thing it uses it for is the emission system. Uses it to pressurize the DEF system and inject the DEF into the exhaust on the upper. So what we've got, we've got fitting down here and fitting up here. These were in the middle of this, this com uh, compression or European style compression fitting down here on the bottom. Um, goes to a DIN fitting, which anybody that works on hydraulics in the United States knows that that is sometimes hard to come, come across stateside. And then they have these little fittings on the top side. They're just reusable um, fittings you can screw on the end of the hose and then it tightens itself down. But anyway, I'm going to take this all the way off and show you. So that, uh, this collar, my viewfinder back up so I can make sure I'm showing you the right stuff. This collar screws onto the end of this hose and then you screw that all together on the end of this that's how you make your hose connection it was actually sitting in there like so what the problem is is uh everybody knows when you compress air it gets hot and it gets really hot um and they used tadano used a rubber lined braided air hose up here to make this transition from this top fitting down to this fitting here um, the rubber lined hose when it gets exposed to that much heat for a period of time it gets brittle and then it cracks and starts leaking well when it leaks on this crane you lose your air pressure and then the def system doesn't work properly and when the def system doesn't work properly the crane goes into limp mode um, last year we actually had to fly a guy in from Houston to hook his computer up to this thing and call Germany, called Mercedes in Germany and get a code to get it out of limp mode because our previous air hose that we had put on, or actually we hadn't put it on, it was the one that was from Tadano, had started leaking. And so we replaced it with this one and now it has started leaking. So what I'm going to do, and I'm hoping Tadano watches some of my videos, um, I'm going to adapt from this to a pipe thread, to a standard US pipe thread, or maybe to a JIC, some kind of flare, and I'm going to put a Teflon lined heat resistant air hose in there. Um, that's what they use on all the big trucks coming off compressors. The, the Teflon lining is made to withstand the heat where this rubber lining it just doesn't i mean this thing this thing is hard it's hard and it's cracked and it's leaking and it's going to cause us problems so we got to get it changed and in order to keep it from being a consistent problem we're going to re-engineer this a little bit but first i got to do some measuring i got to i got to find out what my actual line diameter is here and then i will cut this since this isn't removable after it's tightened down i'll cut this fitting off and uh, install a new compression fitting on there to go from that metric steel line to a standard pipe thread or a JIC, you know, some, some sort of flare. But before I can do that, I gotta see exactly what we're playing with. It looks like it measures 17.98 millimeters on the outside. So, I'm going to call that 18 millimeter steel line. Now I just got to find a fitting, a compression fitting that will go from that 18 millimeter steel line to, uh, uh, I could put about anything I wanted in there. I could half inch pipe or three quarter inch pipe, whatever. So anyway, once I get to that point, we will get uh, some more video going. All right, boys and girls just got back from uh, our local hydraulic shop went shopping got some pieces so this is our plan 
couldn't find a compression fitting that would fit this size line today and this crane is going to nebraska possibly for the weekend so we need something today so this is what we've got this is a sweat on jic fitting we're going to cut this compression fitting off we'll clean this fitting up we've got uh, some little solder rings that we'll put inside the fitting and uh, we're going to solder these ends on it'll be a permanent connection um, that will allow us to make a hose to fit from one end to the other to use the teflon lined hose and standard fittings that way in case in, if we're ever out in the field and we have an issue with this line in the future or this hose then uh, it will be easily replaced instead of ordering stuff from germany okay it's probably worth a mention that uh what am I use on this? It isn't just your regular electrical solder. This is silver solder or silver brazing alloy. Um, regular electrical solder just wouldn't be enough to hold under pressure. And also since we're throwing some heat in the mix, this stuff melts at a hotter temperature. Um, so as the compressor heat builds up in that line, it shouldn't affect this silver solder. You can tell it's a uh, little different mix it's got i don't know if you can see that it's got kind of a bronzy alloy looking color to it also uh we have to throw some flux in here this flux etches the metal cleans the metal prepares it to uh, bond to the solder um, i've cleaned my fittings up already i cleaned the end of the steel line since i don't have three arms or three hands i've rigged up a little uh, apparatus to hold my fitting where I want it but what I'm gonna do now I'm just gonna take this fitting off of here and you, you can see if I if I didn't have this on here that fitting would just fall off um, but I'm gonna go ahead and flex this up we're gonna fire up the torch and uh, solder this thing on there I'm just gonna use a uh, little oxygen acetylene porta torch with a small welding tip on the end See if I can get my apparatus hooked back up here. Get it oriented the way I want it. Now the way soldering works is you got to get your material hot enough to melt the solder. You don't melt. You don't actually melt the solder with the flame. You heat the material hot enough to melt the solder. Also, I'm going to throw some gloves on and I'm going to move this torch over so I can look at my solder joint. You guys will probably get my fat head in here somewhere. Um, also, eye protection. This stuff can spatter a little bit. The last thing you want to do is get it in your eyeballs. cool off and uh, we'll see what we got you couldn't see the back side very well so hopefully uh, hopefully we got a good beat good beat of solder around it and sometimes you can look down the end of it if you see solder all the way around, you're in good shape. Alrighty, YouTube. I got the fitting sweat on. I, I forgot to turn my camera on when I was sweating this fitting on. I apologize about that, but oh well. 
it's too late now. I'm not taking that fitting back off just so I can re record me soldering it. But. So uh, we got our Teflon lined stainless steel braided air hose on there now. So this thing will put up with the heat and the pressure. Won't have to worry about it getting uh, brittle and spraying a leak. So, in my opinion, for what it's worth, I would say that uh, this is the way maybe they ought to be doing it at the factory. But what do I know? I'm just a crane operator and a mechanic. So I'm gonna fire this thing up, let it uh, build up system pressure, spray some soap on all the fittings, make sure that it don't have any leaks, and uh, put it in service.